Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me for day 14 of our chronological Bible reading. Um, today we find ourselves in Job chapter 38 and 39. My name is Kenny Cargill. I'm a pastor and a, uh, and a business man and uh, I'm doing this in order to hold myself accountable and to make certain that I, when I dig into the word I take a little extra time to think about it because then I have to express to you um, what I'm thinking. And, uh, and so today in 38 and 39, there's a couple of things we're going to point, point out. Um, as I read this, one of the things that, that came out to me that was a new insight on Job is how the voice with which we read the text affects our understanding of who God is. I'm going to demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, and then the second thing I want us to, to see in this section is how God is expressing to Job his absolute power and how important it is that we understand that as we deal with our own life circumstances, the life lesson we can get from that. So let's take a look first at how we should read chapters 38 and 39. Now, as you have looked at some of this, if you've been paying attention or you've watched some of my videos from earlier commentaries, what you'll see is that God and Joe both are sarcastic sometimes. Now, let me define sarcasm because um, people give it a little bit different. Some people consider sarcasm to always be biting and always to be a cut down, to always be something negative. Um, other people look at sarcasm and it's kind of the, the, it's the use of irony to make a point. So that point may be something, um, uh, maybe something funny, uh, or maybe it's at using irony and sarcasm to make a point with a sense of humor. So we're going to take a look at this, and, and, and what you hear is according to the voice you get it. So let's look at a couple of places where this happens in the text. So get your Bible. Uh, we're in Job chapter 38, verse 2. Uh, let's start in verse 1. It says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens the counsel, my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Now, this is just a straightforward statement. It's a power statement by God. God is saying, obviously, hey, who do you think you are who's darkened, who, who, who darkens my counsel, who, who thinks you know what I have to say? Now, you brace yourself because I'm about to tell you some things. And, uh, and I will question you, and you will answer me in the end. God here is expressing his authority. This is not sarcasm. This is direct. But then he goes on from there and God asks questions. And this is where you start to hear a little bit of that sarcasm. He goes, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measure, measuring line across it? On what were, were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind the doors? And he goes on with this kind of conversation. But here, that little bit of sarcasm here, where he says, "Where will in verse 4, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimension, dimensions? Surely you know. Now, you can read it flat like that. But a sarcastic person might read it something more like this. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. So, you hear that? Or... Someone a little more, soft, more softer heart or softer tone of voice in themselves. You might read that a little bit. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. You see, one's gentle and one's harsh. And uh, that may be subtle, but as you apply that throughout the rest of this text, it makes you see God as either someone who is a sarcastic, you know, slap you down kind of God, or as a God who, um, who makes a point, but might make, and might use some irony in the, in his discussion, but it's going to be gentle in spirit and gentle in heart. So, um, yeah. So that's, you're going to have to decipher that a little bit for yourself. Um, just I would say, be careful how you read it. Be sure that that the tone with which you read the scripture matches the facts of what the words are saying. And I would say in this one. God's being really strong. I would say in this one that God is, is actually being a little more harsh rather than gentle. But that's just me. Um, and you can hear this again. Let's look at verse 21 of chapter 38. In chapter 20, 38, 21, it says, 
Surely you know where you know. Well, God asked the question in verse 20. Can you take them to their places? Uh, talking about light and darkness. He says, can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths of their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. So you can see in that, I mean, God is like, I mean, you were born when light and darkness happened, right? Like you can tell them where to go and you know where they come from, right? Surely you know, because you were already born when that happened, which is, you hear that? That's sarcasm. And then he says, you've lived so many years. I mean, you could read that a hundred different ways and every way it comes back with a bit of a blade to it. So, you know, and, and I sort of bring this out, not just to talk about God's character, but also about sarcasm in the life of a believer. Now, um, I actually had a church member ask me yesterday uh, if sarcasm, who's going through this, came across these passages and was like, is sarcasm okay for Christians? And my answer is yes. Um, but use the power of sarcasm for good, not evil. You know, you can use sarcasm to to really cut somebody deep and to hurt and to literally maim people emotionally. But um, but you can also use sarcasm like God uses it here as a strongly worded, sharp response that points out a lack of understanding or that points out an important fact that somebody really needs to listen to. And sometimes sarcasm will wake people up, whereas a gentle answer may not always. So, um, so here, that, that's the sarcasm piece. So you hear that, how you read the Bible, the tone you give it affects actually and reveals how you already see God. Um, then you see this, this sarcastic piece in here again, as we've talked about previously. Um, but then, so let's, let's talk about kind of what's the big point that God's making here in 38 and 39. And without reading a whole lot of extra passages here, God is making one major point, And that's that he is God. That he is in control. He put the light in its place. He, um, you know, he laid the earth's foundations. He deals with the wicked and the righteous. He fixed the limits of the water. He set the gates of heaven. Heaven. He set the gates of death. He set all of all of creation in motion. So he's saying basically to Job, "Look, you question me and my motives, but I am God, and I have." righteousness on my side so um read it ponder that these are these are difficult things to deal with but that's the bottom line so that's chapter 38 and 39 day 14 of reading the bible through in a year i hope that's been helpful and encouraging to you ponder these things make some comments um, respond please do a thumbs up or a check or a like or whatever wherever you're watching this to let me know um, what you think i want to begin to refine how i respond to these passages so it's more and more helpful to you who might be watching them so thank you, friends. I appreciate you watching this. And thanks for helping me to be accountable and grow in the Lord myself. Have a blessed night.